So hard surface modeling is one of the strongest aspects of Blender and actually one of the most fun aspects that you actually learn about in Blender. Within Blender, hard surface modeling is extremely uh, versatile and extremely complex but that, that also makes Blender one of the most powerful softwares in terms of hard surface modeling. And so within this video, I am going to give you some of the most important technical tips and some of the ways you can approach hard surface modeling. I have approximately 6 months of experience in hard surface modeling and the model of this Optimus Prime, the intro that you saw and there was a car in that intro, the scenery, every object within that scenery, pretty much everything within this video that you are going to see except for a few clips, everything has been modeled by me. And so as someone who is a beginner to hard surface modeling in Blender, I have figured out certain aspects of hard surface modeling and certain tricks that really work for me well. And I think it would work for you as well if you're a beginner. So just putting it out there because this tutorial is going to be more beginner friendly. So one way you have to approach modeling as a beginner is to learn about how to model uh, complicated objects with vertex modeling or subdivision surface modeling. So let's talk about vertex modeling. So in this example that I'm showing you, I have modeled this Optimus Prime and there is this abdominal piece of this model that I'm right now recreating just to show you an example. So what you have to do in vertex modeling is that you just add a single vertex and you map out the basic shape of the object. This means that you will have to map out the front of that object and right now as I say I'm doing it the back of the object like this. And once you have mapped out the basic shape you have to just connect all the vertices with edges and add faces to them. Now the reason why I use this vertex modeling method is because it's really fast and effective in modeling certain shapes that might otherwise take a lot of time if you do them in some other way. Now here's the thing, when you add faces to these uh, vertices and these edges, then the model that you have created is pretty much going to be final. So just take your time with mapping out the basic shape because that is what you're going to work with. Now just select the edges and add faces to them. Once you have added faces to them, apply the scale to your model. Remember that in hard surface modeling, you have to keep on applying scale because if your scale is not the default one, then your uh, modifiers will not work properly. Even in setting faces, extruding faces, or maybe even your face orientation. Do keep in mind that you have to also check your face orientation. <laughs> So once you have done this, now you can add minor details with insetting the face or with using the knife tool. In my case, I just insert the face and then use the knife tool to add the finer details. This is one of the methods of uh, how to do uh, vertex modeling, but I will show you another one. In this other example of the model of a car that I have modeled, you can see that there is this shape that goes over the wheel. And this is a very smooth yet a sharp shape. And this is a very interesting one because you can model this with subdivision surface and using the same vertex technique. And I'll show you how. So when in case you have to model anything that has a curvature like this, for example, the helmet of the Optimus Prime or the wheel guard of the car, in both of the cases, what I do is that I just copy a circle and just delete half of its edges. Then you can just duplicate the front edges and then sh uh, make the basic shape of what you want. As I said, in vertex modeling, you just are trying to map out the basic shape of the object you need. The subdivision and the other details that you are going to add will be done later on. For now, you just want low poly details. And so once you are done with these low poly details and the basic shape mapping out, you will just do the same trick. You will add edges to the um, vertices and then add faces to them. And it's just as simple as that, you got yourself a very smooth shape. This works really well. And if you do not know these tricks as a beginner, you are going to be very inefficient with your modeling. Because this really helps us to model objects that are curved like this, you know. And this is pretty much all I have used in techniques to model these two um, models. In case of the model of the Optimus Prime, I did pretty much the exact same thing. And in case of the model of the car, I have approached it in the same way. But there is one more important modeling trick that I have for you. And this is going to be a separate trick. 
and that is to use polybuild tool with subdivision and multi-res modifier. So the model that you see here has armor and I have created all of these armor pieces. And so if you want to create your character's armor, this is the best way. So turn on the magnitude with face selected and align rotation to target. Now you will just add a plane here and then you will just snap that plane right on that target. Now, one thing that you have to uh, keep in mind is that with the polybuild tool, you have to keep in mind that you have to follow the shape of the armor that you desire. So for example, this is the kind of the shape that I want. I want it to be somewhat blocky where the shin bone is and while keeping that blockiness, I want it to extend backwards. This is the main shape of the armor and so I'm going to keep it blocky in the middle. This is how you are going to model the basic shape of the armor. Now this trick really works well for clothes as well and this is kind of used more for retopology but I'm using it for making armor and I'll show you how well it works. The reason why also we are using a multi-res modifier with subdivision surface is because with multi-res we are going to add detail and then with subdivision we are going to use that detail from the multi-res modifier to add finer hard surface details. Now this is going to work and look really well. So this is the basic shape of the armor that I want for the shin guard. Now here's the trick. Then you will add a multi-res modifier and on top of that you will also add a, sub a solidify modifier. Now this solidify modifier will add some thickness like an armor should be. See the armor is usually going to be thick and that's why we are going to use solidify modifier. Now for now you can see that there is some clipping but we will worry about that later on. That's why we have added multi-res modifier because the multi-res modifier will actually help us fix that clipping. So we can reshape the model as we want, you know, I don't really want to keep it in the other shape. So I'm just going to leave it like this and then we will apply the solidify modifier. What this will do is that it will give us the thickness finally. And now just bevel the edges that you have all the way around the model. What this will do is that when we actually apply the multi-res modifier, because we will apply the multi-res modifier, we will not keep it. What this will do is that when we apply the multi-res modifier, it will actually smooth out the whole object, but it will also keep the edges sharp enough that it looks like a hard surface. If you don't apply any bevel to the whole model, then your whole model will actually shrink and look very weird. So the basic shape that you want to maintain, you want to add some bevels to those areas. For example, I want this middle part to be still blocky sort of. So I'm just going to add a very minor bevel here. Now, when you finally do add subdivisions from multi-res modifier, look at what happens. You will really get this nice shape and it really starts to look like an armor. Now, we will also add a uh, subdivision surface. And the reason why we are doing that is because Subdivision surface will help us to add fine details. What happens is that once you apply the multi-res modifier, you get a lot more faces here. Now you can just select the faces that you want to add detail over and then inset them or maybe extrude them as you like. So for example, I inset them and then I can extrude them backwards and look at the nice shape that we get here. This really starts looking like an armor. Now this is one way of approaching how to model armors for your characters but this is a very interesting trick that works very fine. So in this case for example now I'm just selecting some few faces from the sides and I can inset them and extrude them along their um, normals and look at how nice it looks. If you extrude them this is the type of shape that you get. And then you can keep adding details as you want, you know, you just have to turn off subdivision surface modifier occasionally and keep adding details and make interesting shapes like these. You can obviously refine these shapes with some bevels or some uh, sharp edges. But this is how basically you can approach hard surface modeling. This is more of an example for how to model a sci-fi uh, armor and not a primitive, you know, medieval armor. And if you want a tutorial on that, I will give that as well. Just comment down below. But this is basically how I approach hard surface modeling. Now there is one more interesting way you can hard surface use hard surface modeling in Blender. And that is use Boolean tools and box cutting tools. Now there is a very good tutorial of uh, this uh, tool from Josh Gramble. And it's a beginner friendly tutorial. And 
the bull tool and the box cutter tool are really amazing for these types of objects. So for example, you have to just make an interesting shape that looks sci-fi. Then you can use the bull tool and then you can use different functions of it such as the difference or the splice bull tool in order to get some interesting shapes. And so that's pretty much about how to approach hard surface modeling. Now hard surface modeling in Blender comes with its fair shares of troubles. So for example, you might apply your solidify modifier or you might try to extrude faces and it's all messed up. That could be because your normals are not articulated outside. And so you have to check your face orientation. It can be done pretty quickly and there are multiple videos on how to correct your face orientation. In some cases, you might also have some shading issues where you might have overlapping vertices and in that case, you just have to merge those vertices. In other cases where you might have shading artifacts because you just added a bevel, you just have to insert faces and control, add some control loops around your bevel. Remember that beveling your edges on a complex shape can actually cause some shading artifacts. And so to fix that, you have to add control loops. And so I wanted to add this troubleshooting portion just because these are some of the common problems that we tend to miss out on when we are working on brick projects. When you are working on, let's say, modeling a big car or something, you tend to overlook some of the smallest details. And so keeping in mind that these problems might arise will help you in the long run. With that, I would like to conclude the video. And if you have any questions regarding this video or the hard surface modeling, you can comment down below and I will see you guys in the next one.